One of the biggest questions that we often ask patients is what is the one system that controls everything else in your body? The spinal cord is the organ organizer of much of the disease processes. So one of the studies, and I have to give a shout out to Dr. Dan Sullivan, who uh, makes a lot of this research more uh, visible within our field. And one of the, one of the studies that uh, we re he refers to is the work of PhD neurophysiologist Irvin Kaur. And Dr. Kaur spent five decades, 50 years of his life, studying the spine and its direct influence on the nervous system. In 1976, he published a series of papers with many references pointing to the fact that an alteration in a segment or area of the spine absolutely negatively affected the nervous system function. And the title of the article was The Spinal Cord as the Organizer of Disease Processes. Now, I know that Dr. Kaur was not a chiropractor and even went on to embrace the osteopathic profession before journeying to the chiropractic uh, profession and philosophy and science. But his work on understanding the relationship between the spine and the nervous system is profound. In fact, he published so many articles in his career and had such an influence in spine and neurophysiology that the eulogy in his funeral was also published in PubMed. That's pretty incredible. Most of his work helps validate the power of a chiropractic adjustment. Kaur had a fascinating story about when his health was slipping when he was in his 40s. And he was treated by an osteopathic physician uh, using an adjustment of the spine. After one treatment, he went for a walk and found an irresistible urge to break into a jog, which he hadn't done in years. Soon he was breathing heavily and it propped up against a tree when he took a deep breath in and he felt his rib cage fully expand, literally tearing, tearing several small adhesions. And from that moment on, he described a transformation in his life. He threw away his sunglasses, realizing he could now automatically control his pupils without them, whereas before he would have been blinded by the sun with uh, abnormal light sensitivity. And Cora attributes his long life, and he lived well into his mid-90s. I have uh, numerous patients in their 90s as well, and have over the years. And his prolonged intellectual activity to having received quality traditional osteopathic and later chiropractic spinal adjustive care. So Core passionately showed that the medical approach of glorifying the organs, just say the heart, which are merely organs designed to maintain the musculoskeletal system in our view, in his view, misunderstands the true nature of a human being. He enjoyed pointing out that doctors and scientists of that time made the common error when teaching and creating textbooks of showing multitudes of nerve endings traveling out to each internal organ, but only a few scant bra branches connected to the joints and soft tissue mechanoreceptors, which are little bundles of nerves in your tendons, as well as showing very few nerve endings in spinal facets, discs, and muscles directly attached to your vertebrae. So he would laugh as he described this was backwards since the musculoskeletal system had 90% of the connections with the nervous system. So did you hear that? The spine and structures of the body have 90% of the connections to your brain and the nervous system. Roger Sperry, a Nobel Prize winner in brain research, said that 90% of the stimulation and nutrition of the brain, or to the brain, is generated by movement of the spine. That's a statistic I refer to probably every day. And Core helped prove that the spine was much more than just a structure that helped us stand more erect and protected the spinal cord. He was also unique and inspiring as he always pointed out that we as humans express our humanness 
by choosing to do things such as uh, play the piano, ski, walk, you know, other activities. He pointed out the importance of taking care of the whole person in healthcare instead of just the reductionist viewpoint of picking out just one diseased organ or part like an allopathic physician practices. Does this sound familiar to what chiropractors talk about in virtually all of our communications? The bottom line in the work of Quor was how he showed that a vertebral subluxation creates a stress that causes an increased tone in the sympathetic nerve system. And we now know that increased sympathetic tone in the nervous system sets off a cascade of autonomic processes as if the body was being attacked. So that increased tone leads us to what we would call the fight or flight behavior in physiology, say when you're getting attacked or running from a dog. And here's the thing, it's a good response that helps you in an acute situation, but like you know, it will kill you chronically. What I mean by that is this short-term situation, it's good. However, if it stays there long-term, day in and day out, it's going to destroy and tear down your body. This is because an increase in sympathetic tone increases stress hormones, known as catecholamines, which would include adrenaline and noradrenaline, and decreases relaxing hormones like serotonin and relaxin. Like I said, that's good for a short time. Helps you fight or flight or predator but sustained over a long duration, it tears down the body. And from decreased immunity, uh, impaired digestion, shutting down fertility, uh, focus, attention, energy, this state of physiology is not what a healthy human being should experience for a sustained period of time. And this happens with every vertebral subluxation. Remember a subluxation, normally bones are in alignment, and the spinal nerves come off the spine. And if a bone is out of alignment, that can interfere with the nerve transmission out to the body and back to the brain. And this process of fight or flight happens with every vertebral subluxation because of its influence on the central nervous system. 